Okay, so in this tutorial we'll be uh, looking at chapter, in this video we'll be looking at tutorial number one in chapter eight, SOLIDWORKS. So if you look at the diagram here, it's not that complex, but the only new feature that will be included in this compared to what uh, you've already done in the previous chapters is the inclusion of this rib right here. So they've given us the three views here, you can see in figure 79. And uh, yeah, so let's start sketching this. So first they have drawn the uh, square that's given in the back of this diagram so here you can see they have initially drawn this box right here so to do that just make sure that you select the proper plane that you're going to draw um, so here I'll be selecting the front plane go to the normal and before you construct make sure that the units that you have entered is correct so here even though they have not given any uh, units uh, we'll assume that it's in millimeters but here you can change your uh, units before you start drawing uh, it's given here in the bottom corner okay, so you go to sketch you can draw a box so make sure that when you're drawing you draw with respect to your origin so I'll I'm assuming that this origin is going to be in this corner so yeah I don't even I have to draw the exact uh, sketch first I'll just draw uh, a square without the proper dimensions so after you've drawn a rough sketch now you can start to give your dimensions so you can select smart dimensions here and if you look at the uh, if you look at the sketch here it says that the horizontal distance for this box is going to be 10 so I will give that so it's going to be 10 millimeters and the vertical height of this box is going to be 45 millimeters Okay, so now we have a fully defined sketch. So make sure every time you start to sketch, you uh, before you move on to another sketch or before you move on to uh, exclude whatever that is uh, you have drawn, make sure that your sketch is fully defined. So since uh, you can check that out from here, so since my sketch is fully defined, I go to features and I'll exclude this box. So this has to be excluded for uh, 69 millimeters. It's given here, so I'll exclude it. 69 millimeters and I'll tick OK ok so next they have drawn these two squares or these two rectangles sorry so as you can see those rectangles start from the right hand side of this box that we've already drawn so make sure that when you're sketching you select the right face to draw on so I'll select the right hand side of this box uh, select view to normal and I'll begin to uh, construct those two squares. So, you can go to sketch, select a line. Again, I'll draw a rough uh, sketch of those two rectangles first before uh, I give any dimensions. So, again, it's something like this. Okay, so now, now that I have the sh let's get rid of that. So now that I have this uh, rough shape of the two uh, rectangles, I can start giving my dimensions. So you can see the distance from uh, this point right here to the origin is going to be 85, 85 millimeters. So initially we won't be giving the fillers later after we extrude this diagram, we'll uh, extrude these uh, rectangles as well, we can give the fillets. So for now we can uh, assign this as 85 millimeters and this thickness is going to be 10 you can see here from uh, the side view you can see that it's going to be 10 millimeters that's going to be this thickness so smart dimensions and this will be 10 okay so you can see that the distance from the topmost point of this object to the center of this circle which is also in line with this point right here so that distance is going to be 75 so we can give that as well from the topmost point of the diagram of the object to the center of the circle which is uh, collinear with this line that's going to be 75 okay so this is also going to be 10 
again make sure that every time you are uh, done with a sketch make sure that your sketch is fully defined before you move on to extruding so now we can go to features extrude boss so we want to change the direction of this extrusion so we don't want it to uh, get extruded in this direction so you can do that by selecting this icon right here it's this reverse direction and you can change the distance so the distance in which these two rectangles are extruded is from here to here okay so that's in the sketch and that's equal to the diameter of the large circle so that is going to be 38 millimeters it's given right here 38 millimeters okay so now you're done with that So next they are asking us to draw the uh, cylinder at the bottom and to cut extrude these holes and to cut extrude this hole in the first uh, rectangle that we drew. So if we move back to the sketch, so we, have to, we can start drawing the uh, cylinder from here, from this plane. So we can select the surface, go to uh, view to normal, select sketch. So the center of the circle is going to be on the center of this line. So those two are in line so we can select that and easily do it. So the radius of the circle is going to be 19. And now you can go to features, extrude. <coughs> okay so here we just uh, drew this cylinder on this surface right here. So from this point on you need to extrude it by 12 millimeters in one direction, uh, in the uh, front direction and 13 millimeters which is 25 minus 12 13 millimeters on the opposite direction or the reverse direction so we can do that by clicking on direction number 2 so now we have two directions so in the first, uh, in the front direction extrusion is going to be by uh, 12 millimeters and in the reverse direction extrusion is going to be by 25 minus uh, 12 that's 13 millimeters So now you have your rectangle. Now we can uh, start constructing the cortex screws on your cylinder as well. So you can select the cylinder, go to s view normal to cylinder, you can go to sketch. And uh, you can automatically get the center of the cylinder that you drew. So here you can construct the small cylinder right here. So the dimension for this small uh, cortex screw, I mean this uh, cortex screw uh, circle is not given I couldn't find it so I I'll assume that that's going to be 25 uh, 20 so let's assume that this will be 20 and here I think if you magnify the sketch you can see that here they have said uh, diameter 6 times 4 even though you have 6 holes here they have uh, said it as diameter 6 times 4 so I think they made a mistake here. I think it's supposed to be diameter 4 times 6 holes. So we'll have to change that as well. So assume that this is diameter 4 times 6 holes. Okay, so before we move on to that, we can cut extrude this hole as well. So go to features, cut extrude. And again, when you're cut, uh, using the feature cut extrude, make sure that you don't use blind. You only use blind if you know the exact distance that the cut extrude is supposed to happen. So without selecting blind, we can go to up to next. And we can select the surface. I mean, not up to next, sorry, uh, up to surface. And we can select the surface until which this should, uh, this cortex root should happen. And you can select OK. Okay, so now you have uh, cut, uh, this cortex root. I need to make these six uh, small holes. So you can do that by selecting the surface, moving normal to the surface. And so these six. Um, small holes are all in line with a radius of 25 millimeters from the center of the circle so you can just draw a reference circle with uh, diameter 12 point f uh, with radius 12.5 you can construct a center line you can just draw one of these uh, circles cut exclude that and then you can use the sketch pattern uh, circular pattern to uh, get the other five so we'll try that so before that we need to construct the center lines and we can draw one circle here 
so let's assume the diameter of the circle is going to be 4 and the radius is going to be 2 so the diameter is <coughs> and the radius of this is 25 of the reference circle ok so they have said that the angle from the uh, horizontal uh, center line to the the center of this circle is going to be 45 so again we'll have to draw another reference center line running through the center of this circle and we can give the angle between these two center lines as 45 ok so now you have a fully defined sketch here again now you just have to go to cortex grid select the two surfaces Uh, up to surface and select the surface until which you want to perform that context screw. Ok, so this is done. Now we can go to features, circular pattern, and we can select the pattern. So here you have to select the feature that you want to pattern or mimic. So here they've already selected, SolidWorks has already selected the cortex screw feature as what we are going to uh, pattern, and uh, we want to select the axis about which this uh, cortex grid is patterned around so we can select this circular surface or you can just uh, always draw imaginary axis and do it but this is easier so as you can see you can easily get the other five cortex screws as well so we are pretty much done with the cylinder area here now we just have to perform this cortex screw so we will normal to this surface you can sketch a circle here and the horizontal distance from the center of the circle horizontal distance from the center of the circle to the topmost point is going to be 22 it's given here that's 22 millimeters and the vertical distance is going to be 18 okay so the diameter of this circle is also not given but we can assume that that is going to be equal to 20 by looking at this arc, so this this filler right is almost similar to the size of this uh, cortex screw hole. So we'll assume that that's that's the case. Here. So we'll assign that as 20 millimeter in uh, 20 millimeter in diameter. Go to features, select cortex screw, and perform that function. So again, after surface. So next step, perform the fillets. Um, so you have one fillet. If you go back to the sketch, you have one fillet that's radius 31. So you just have to select the line that you want to fillet, not the two surfaces. Select the line, go to the fillet feature, and that's radius 31. You can apply the radius here and select OK. And you have another fillet here that's going to be radius 10. Select the fillet option. This is going to be 10 and click apply okay, and this uh, this edge is also going to be filleted that's going to be with a radius of 15 okay, so now that's done now we need to construct the rib so this is the hard part of this uh, this model so uh, as you can see here when you're constructing uh, this rib you need a you need a secondary plane okay, so you can't construct in either one of these three given planes because they are not in the right position so we'll have to come up with our own plane so you can do that by and you can see that the distance of this plane that we should draw is going to be or the starting point of the rib is going to be 14 millimeters from the right edge so from here from this surface the starting point of the rib is going to be 14 millimeters and the thickness of the rib is going to be 10 millimeters so we can go to reference plane, select plane, and in reference to this surface. So we don't want our reference plane to be on this side, we want to change the direction. So you can click flip to offside 
and it's uh, so we can give it from 14 millimeters but that's only the starting point of the rib so it'll be easier if we construct this reference plane from the center of the uh, rib itself so that's going to be 14 plus 5 millimeters that's half of the thickness of the rib so that's why you get 19 millimeters here and you can click OK so when you're drawing a rib make sure that you don't completely close it because then you won't get the actual shape of the rib it has to be an open contour so we are normal to the plane and we need to draw this so start off by drawing a rough sketch of the diagram So it's something like this. Now you can give the dimensions. So this vertical distance is going to be 10. The yeah, this thickness is going to be 10 as well. And you have a fillet of radius 25. So this is a diagram now, again it's fully defined, go to features, select rib, so this is what we want but the problem is if you select OK here, you can see that they're saying the resulting rib did not intersect with the existing model, please try changing the extrusion direction to fix this problem. So as you can see here the direction is given in the upward, uh, in the upward direction, so uh, what SOLIDWORKS is trying to do is they're trying to use this shape that we have drawn here and they are trying to extend this until it uh, reaches the object that we are drawn but the problem is if you extend this you are never going to reach the object that you are drawn because of the direction so we need to make sure that we change the direction to the bottom bottom side okay so now if you extend this outline you will meet the surface right so that is that was a the problem there so if you guys encountered that make sure to change this direction and uh, the thickness is going to be 10 and you can select ok you have the rib as well and you can finish this by applying the final fillets so yeah there's one more fillet here it's of radius 20 So this is the final model for the tutorial 2 in chapter 8 of SOLIDWORKS.